Today we're going to be looking at the National 5 Chemistry paper from 2015, focusing on the multiple choice part of the paper. If you've not already tried this part of the paper, I would recommend that you try it first and then use this to help you mark it and you can see where you might have made mistakes. So question one, an atom has 26 protons, 26 electrons and 30 neutrons. And then we've got a bit of a question here about what the atom has. So atomic number is always the number of protons. So that means that a atomic number for us can only be 26. Mass number is always your number of protons plus your number of neutrons because those are the two particles which actually have mass. So if we add together 26 and 30, we get 56. So our answer is A. Question two, the table shows the number of protons, electrons and neutrons in four particles, W, X, Y and Z. Which of the pair of particles are isotopes? So an isotope is something which has the same atomic number, but different mass numbers. So they have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. So in this table, the only ones that have the same number of protons are W and Y, and if we look at their neutrons, they are different. So our answer for this is B. Which of the following particles contains a different number of electrons from the others? You may wish to use your data book to help you. When it says you may wish to use your data book to help you, use your data book. Have a look through until you find a page which looks like it would be helpful. In this case, you're wanting the one with electron configuration, so that's page six of your data book. So electron configuration of chlorine is 287. We've got a negative charge, so we've, we're adding one on, so that means we've got 288. For sulfur, it's usually 286. We've got a two negative charge, so we're adding on two, so that is 288. Argon is just 288 as it is, so so far we've got three that are the same. And then finally, sodium is usually 281, and the positive charge means that we've lost one, so that is 28. This means that our answer here is D, sodium. Question four, which of the following, gas, following diagrams shows apparatus which would allow a soluble gas to be removed from a mixture of gases? So here we've got gas coming in and gas going out and it's not going into the water. So that's not going to allow it to dissolve really. Here we've got gas going in and the going out tube is within the water. So that won't help. This one here, we've got a gas going in and the tube is going right down into the water, which means that the gas is gonna bubble through there and anything that's soluble can dissolve and everything else will just bubble out. And then finally, we've got the gas going in and nowhere for it to bubble out into that tube. So C is your answer here. Soluble gas will dissolve, the rest of it will pass through. Which of the following diagrams could be used to represent the structure of a covalent network? So a covalent network has a long range lattice of covalently bonded atoms. Covalent bonds are usually shown by lines. A shows a um, lots of positive cores and delocalized electrons around them, so that's metallic. B shows alternating positive and negative charges, they are ions, so that's ionic. C shows discrete molecules with a black and a white atom with a line between them, and then no bonds between the molecules themselves, so that's covalent molecular. And finally, D has lots of atoms with covalent bonds between them. D is your covalent network. Question six, we're calculating charges on the chromium ion. So the way to calculate the charge on the chromium ion is to use the chlorine to help you. So you should know that the charge on one chlorine is negative one. So you've got three times negative one equals minus three. There's no charge on this overall. So the chromium must be three plus to balance that out. Metals are always positive. so the only answers you could have really considered were A and C, and C is your answer. 
The table contains information about calcium and calcium chloride. So calcium melts at 142 degrees and has a density of 1.54 grams per centimeter cubed. Calcium chloride has a lower melting point at 772, but is more dense at 2.15. When molten, when molten calcium chloride is electrolyzed at 800 degrees, the calcium appears as what? So at 800 degrees, your calcium chloride has melted and you're electrolyzing it, so you're splitting it into calcium and chlorine. Chlorine will be a gas. And we need to know where we'd find the calcium. So at 800 degrees, calcium has not melted yet, so it will be a solid. So only A and C as our options there. However, it is less dense than the calcium chloride, which will be a liquid, and that means that it will float on the top of the calcium chloride. So C is your answer. Question 8. For questions like this, I always find it best to just try and balance the equation yourself. So you've got Al plus Br2 to become Al Br3. You're always best to try and get rid of the 3, it makes things easier to balance. So if we put a 2 in front of the AlBr3, that means we've now got 6 bromines. So if we put a 3 in front of the bromine and a 2 in front of the aluminium, then everything is balanced, which means that the answer is B. Question 9. 0.2 moles of a gas has a mass of 12.8 grams. Which of the following could be the molecular formula for the gas? So here we're using your moles mass GFM triangle in a slightly different way than we usually would. So we're going to have gram formula mass equals mass divided by moles. You have mass is 12.8 grams and you know how many moles that is. So it's 64 grams as the gram formula mass. So if you go through each of these, so for SO2, you have 32 plus 16 plus 16, which equals 64. So that should be your answer. If you check the others, you have 12 plus 16, so that's 28. You have 12 plus 16 plus 16 equals 44. You have 14 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which equals 17. So your answer is A, SO2. Which of the following oxides, when shaken with water, would leave the pH unchanged? So this means that you need the oxide to be non-soluble. So you're looking in the data book and you'd be looking at page 8 of the data book. You've got a solubility table there. Carbon dioxide is soluble and it's a non-metal. So uh, and it's soluble, so that means you'll form an acid, form carbonic acid. Copper oxide is non-soluble, so it should be the answer. Sodium oxide is a metal oxide, and it is soluble. Metal oxides form alkalis when they are soluble. And sulfur dioxide is a non-metal and soluble. So like carbon dioxide also forms an acid. So our answer is copper oxide because it's non-soluble. Okay, question 11. Which compound would not neutralize hydrochloric acid? So things which neutralize acids are bases. So a base can be a carbonate, hydroxide or an oxide. They would all neutralize your acid. So the answer that you're looking for is B, sodium chloride. That's a salt, it's not a base. The name of the above compound is what? So for this, you're best to just go along and name it as you would usually. So find the longest chain and number from the end closest to our branch. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So the base of this name is pentane. On two and three, we have methyl groups and we have two of them. So we have two, three, dimethyl pentane. And then you just need to check the names and find that. So that's C. 
Okay, the short and structural formula for an orga organic compound is shown below, which of the following is another way of representing this structure. So that just means you need to draw this out in full. So we're starting here with CH3. I'm not going to show the H's on this structure. Where we've got a bracket, that's a branch on the preceding carbon. So here we've got OH as a branch, and then we have carbon here with three CH3 groups attached. So the answer for this one is the one that matches, which is A. Okay, question 14. Three members of the cycloalkene homologous series are shown here. What is the general formula for this homologous series? So you're best to start by writing out the formulas for these. So we've got C4, H6, C5, H8, and C6, H10. Now most of the general formulas that you know start with Cn, H2, N. So we've got Cn, H2, N. And then you need to work out what has happened. So you've got 4, which would double to give 8. So to get back to 6, we're minusing 2. 5 doubles to give 10, minus 2 will give 8. And 6 doubles to give 12, minus 2 is 10. So Cn, H, 2N, minus 2 is our answer, which is D. Question 15. Metallic bonding is a force of attraction between what? So negative and positive ions would be ionic. A shared pair of electrons and two nuclei would be covalent. Positive ions and delocalised electrons is metallic. And negative ions and delocalised electrons doesn't happen. So our answer is C. Number 16. Which pair of metals when connected in a cell would give the highest voltage and a flow of electrons from X to Y? You may wish to use a data book to help you. You need to use page 10 of your data book and you're looking for the metals with the biggest difference and we're trying to flow from X to Y. So the more reactive metal is X and the less reactive metal is Y. So zinc and tin, uh, zinc is more reactive than tin. Uh, tin and zinc would be the wrong way round. Copper and magnesium is the wrong way round and magnesium and copper is the correct way round. So we've got two options and magnesium and copper have a bigger difference on the page 10. So that would give you the biggest voltage. Question 17, part of a structure of a polymer is shown below and you're to work out what the monomer was. So to work out the monomer, you need to find the repeating unit. So the repeating unit is the bit which repeats the whole way along. So it's these three parts here. What you need to do is take these double bonds and put them back in so that you end up with a double bond between the two. So that gives you A as your monomer. Okay, question 18. Sodium sulfate solution reacts with barium chloride solution. And you're to identify the spectator ions. You're best to write this out in full uh, as ionic formula. So the 2 comes out to the front, so we end up with 2Na+, and they are aqueous, plus a sulfate ion, which is also aqueous. You have barium chloride, your two aqueous ions and the two goes in front of the chloride ions. That's becoming barium sulfate which is a solid plus two sodium ions and two chloride ions. We then need to identify our spectator ions, they're the ones that do not change so we've got sodium and sodium, they haven't changed and we have chloride and chloride which haven't changed. So Na plus and Cl minus are the spectator ions. Question 19. Which of the following solutions would produce a precipitate when mixed together? You may wish to use the data book to help you. So for this you need to work out what the products will be. So for A you're going to swap them so you'll end up with 
ammonium nitrate, which will be soluble, and potassium chloride, which is also soluble, so it's not that one. For B, you'll have zinc sulfate and magnesium nitrate. Okay, both of those are soluble. For C, you will have calcium chloride, which is soluble, and nickel nitrate, which is also soluble. And then finally, you'll have sodium nitrate, which is soluble, and silver iodide, which is not soluble. So this one would be your precipitate, which means that D is your answer. And finally, question 20. The table shows some colours of ionic compounds in solution. And you're to work out the colour of the chromate ion. So we've got copper sulphate, which is blue. We have copper chromate, which is green. Potassium chloride, which is colourless. And potassium chromate, which is yellow. So we have here potassium chromate is yellow chromate, which is given the yellow. And you know the chromate is given the yellow and not the potassium because potassium chloride was colourless, which means the answer is D, yellow. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.